Welcome to the Banyan Edge Podcast. Here's your host, Charles Sizemore. Welcome. I'm Charles Sizemore, a host of the Banyan Edge Podcast, America's number one source for smarter, safer, more profitable investing. And today we have a treat for you. We are talking about what is really, I think without a doubt, the single biggest investing trend of probably the rest of our lives. I think this is actually bigger than the internet. I think I can credibly say, I can credibly say that. We are talking, of course, about artificial intelligence, also known as AI. This is not the future. This is actually the present. I have told this story before, but I have a good friend who actually, yeah, he's the director of marketing for a major telecom company in Latin America. And he just kind of playing around one day in his kitchen table, actually created a marketing plan complete with graphical mascot and everything that ended up going viral and getting him written up in a trade journal and everything else. So this is already happening. This is not the future. This is now. And to help me digest all this and to point us in the direction of the opportunities is Amber Lancaster. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good to see you, Charles. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. So I know AI is something that you and 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 your your colleague Ian Ian King, you guys are very into this. This is something you guys have been exploring now for months, if actually not a couple of years. You guys are knee deep in this technology. Tell me, what are you seeing these days? Oh, there's so much to see, Charles. And in, speaking of seeing, I like to just have a little quiz. If everyone is on board, would you like to have a little AI quiz at this moment, Charles? Are you going to ask us what's real and what's not? I am. Okay, I'm okay. going to I'm share. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. The question is to Banyan Edge Nation and to you, Charles. Can you guess which of these cute two little puppies is real versus an AI generated image? So, is it the dog here on the left, or is it the dog on the right screen? That's the AI dog. What do you think, Charles? I'm guessing that the left one is the AI dog and the right one is real, but I'm not like fully committed to that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to ring the ding, 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 ding bell. You are correct, Charles. This is the AI dog. Hi, I'm an AI pup. It's not a real dog. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's convincing though. Like yeah. I, I was, I was a little bit more than a coin flip on that, but <laughs> not much more than a coin flip on that. Okay. Understandable. So what's most interesting about this is that right now, Charles, AI, artificial intelligence is at the top of many people's minds, mine included. Some people are, well, we can say embracing it. Some are scared of it. Some are just simply skeptical. Like, hey, is this really a real thing? Yes, it is. But no matter the stance, I can say, Charles, investors are seeking ways right now to make money off this growing phenomenon. And I just like to share my screen here. It's a Bloomberg screen, and it's an article uh, from Bloomberg titled, AI and robotics ETFs are now in vogue topping crypto in 2023. And this really points out the following. A recent survey that actually revealed 56% of investors want to add AI to their portfolio. Uh, Banyan Edge Nation, Charles, are you one of them? I'm thinking you are. It's a rhetorical question. But oh as, my goodness, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <and then, laughs> but, but where do I sign up? <laughs> I love it. But this article notes actually that AI powered chatbots like ChatGPT, it's catching the eye of ETF investors who are looking for exposure to this trend. And a recent survey by Brown Brothers Harriman. It showed that professional investors, I mentioned 56%, are planning to add AI and robotics-focused ETF strategies to their portfolios this year, up from 46% last year. And as Bloomberg notes, uh, quote, uh, the category beat, uh, uh, of all thematic strategies except internet and technology, uh, that's a stark contrast to 20. 22, when AI and, and robotics trailed environmental, social, and governance or ESG and digital asset uh, themed type ETFs. So a recent rally in AI stocks has supercharged investor interest in, in the industry and, and ETFs tracking robotics and AI have pulled in roughly $105 million uh, in March, while other thematic strategies like clean energy, electric cars, and cloud computing all saw outflows. And this is all according to data compiled by Bloomberg Intelligence. So I just thought that article was pretty cool. 
Charles. No, for sure. Yeah. And have you have you played around with ChatGPT yourself yet? I have not done it fully. I have seen it done, but I haven't done it. I don't know why. I should I should just take the plunge. What do you think, Charles? Have you worked on it yet? Have you pulled it? I, it for me, it's still a toy. I, I haven't <laughs> done anything serious with it, but I've I've played with it and I've I've never ceased to be shocked by it. It's not that it can just like reply with answers it can actually create whereas what it gets interesting I, I i with my friends we were trying to come up with the most absurd things we could think of okay what is something that ah, chat gp it can't do this i know that that that's too much it'll blow up it won't be able to do that or, or it'll do it but it'll be terrible mm -hmm. and so, right, okay 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 it can't do this write me a uh, write write me a poem an epic poem an iambic pentameter mm -hmm about the life and basketball career of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh. No, he won't do that. And it did, it, like a second. You know, it, in the time it took me to hit the button, it you know, spit up something completely original that was actually very good. It was like something a, a witty sports writer would have taken you know, several, you know, many, many hours, if not days, to put together. And wow. it was good. I had another friend say, okay, okay, I, I got you beat, I got you beat, I got you beat. <laughs> I want you to, uh, Chad GPT, write me a parody song set to the, I think it was uh, Soul Asylum was the band, Runaway Train. You might remember that song from the early yeah. 90s. Mm -hmm. Set to the tune of Runaway Train, make me uh, a parody in the voice of Luke Skywalker. Ooh. And it did, and it rhymed, and it was good. I mean, this was like something Weird Al Yankovic would have come up with. I mean, Weird Al Yankovic's oh. going to be out of a job mm. because of this. <laughs> well, no, say Weird Al. You know, <laughs> Weird Al can't go out of business. Uh, that's uh, That would yeah. just be wrong. But this is also, like, this is going in all sorts of directions. Uh, I, I don't know if you, I think you, you saw the news. <laughs> There's me. actually AI-generated music now. Oh, or yeah. people like me that like to live in the past, I could hypothetically tell an AI to create an album that sounds like Metallica's and Justice for All, because mm -hmm. everything after that just kind of went downhill, right? So they can just create original music that sounds like their guitar, sounds like the vocals, just it sounds like the band. Well, this mm -hmm. is already happening. So, so there was actually a pretty significant uh, court case where uh, there was a, uh, a, I don't know, an, an amateur content creator who copied the, the voice and the musical style of Drake and made a, a song that actually went viral and it was good. It, good it sounded <laughs> You saw I, I heard a song that it was created um, using uh, AI for Drake <laughs> in the weekend, and it was pretty good. So, hey, okay. that was yeah, my... and it, it sounded it sounded good. It sounded like something you would do. Then this brings all sorts of questions. Mm -hmm. Who owns that? Right. <laughs> I, I can dress up like Elvis Presley, grow out my sideburns, and move to Vegas and and put on Elvis Presley impersonation shows. No <laughs> one would ever pay to see that, but I could do that, and I would have to pay whoever owns the royalties of you know. Elvis Presley song, I would have to pay them, right? Right. But when right. it comes to AI, it's not actually a Drake song. It just mm -hmm. sounds like him. Mm -hmm. So there's all sort of, this is, this is like infinitely interesting. And we're at, we're at the very beginning of this. Like, we don't even know where it's going to go after this, but it, mm -hmm. but it is really exciting. It's truly exciting. And, and just like you're mentioning with chat GPT, uh, it, it's only the beginning. And this chart actually can, that I have brought with me today can show you why. It's a Bloomberg chart that actually shows the robotics and AI thing funds and how we, we saw initially outflows. You'll see outflows here in October 2022 through December 2022. But after the release of now the infamous chat GPT on November 30th, 2022, the AI chat bot quickly gained popularity, garnering at that time maybe over 1 million users by December 4th. But you can see here, by January 2023, AI fund outflows reverse and turned into inflows and has, has climbed ever since. So I just thought that was a fascinating chart. How Chat GPT Charles is now has more, more than well, it's probably more than this, but 1.6 billion users, and it's just arrived, and it's just and it's counting, and all many investors are just wagering 
that AI has the capacity to be deflationary. That's an interesting term over the long oh, term. Yeah. Um, yep, yep, due to its ability to lower costs and improve efficiencies. But well, no, th think about it. this was a recent headline. Mm -hmm. So Wendy's, the, the fast food uh, joint, they are partnering with Google to train an AI to replace the, mm -hmm. uh, the drive through window order taker. That's so right. ima but imagine, imagine th there's that was the headline. And that's great. But I actually read between the lines and, and go even deeper than that. Mm -hmm. So once it's going to take them a while to get it trained, even now, when I tell Siri to place a song or something, Siri misunderstands my horrendous Texas accent about, you know, a third of the time. Right. <laughs> but but you know, once this gets properly trained out, mm -hmm. anybody from any country speaking any language mm -hmm. could but order their burger and fries or what, whatever. And it's, it's going to take the, it's going to process it. You're going to need to have a human somewhere to deal with uh, perhaps customer complaints or more complicated orders or something. Right. But you're not going to need them that often. No. Or, you know, whatever, 90, 95% of the, the orders, it's just going to be, it's just going to be like that. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is just the beginning. So we know that one of the big drivers of inflation over the last, call it two years, has been the labor shortage. Mm -hmm. And there's no obvious fix to that. You can't just snap your fingers and make new workers appear out of nowhere. No. Um, our labor force is not growing because the, the baby boomers are aging out of the workforce and the new generation coming up is not as big as they were. Mm -hmm. So we actually have kind of a flatlining uh, labor force. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the reasons why it's even if the economy slows a little bit, we may not get that relaxing and, and wage pressure that we need to really bring inflation down. It's right. one of the reasons why stagflation remains a risk. Now you get something like this, you get truly labor being replaced by AI. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you know, Wendy's doesn't need as many workers. They can hire right. fewer workers. They can pay the workers they have more and just hire fewer people Already, you go to a McDonald's and you walk in. I just outed myself. I go to McDonald's. I'm, okay. I should, it's I'm, okay. <laughs> just don't tell my life insurance company, okay? I will. <laughs> I, they, they, they think I'm healthy. Anyway, you, you, know, you, you go inside a McDonald's and where there used to be three or four cashiers, now there's just one because a lot of people order on their phone or they order in an in-restaurant kiosk. Artificial intelligence just takes that to the next level. At, at this point, even people with Thick, uh, thick accents like myself, or you know, rumbly, in inaudible voices like myself, they can be heard and understood. So this this is this is exciting. It's very exciting. I'm I'm glad you brought up the Wendy story because great minds think alike, Charles. I was just on a, a video with Ian, and we talked about the Wendy story. So this is truly something phenomenal that's happening now and we need to just pay attention and i would love to to see have my first experience with this ai drive through at some point as i was mentioning to ian ordering a frosty so we'll see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> you know what wendy's is famous for <laughs> so i do I, would, I, I do enjoy me a frosty from time to time oh yeah. I, just, again i just i shouldn't say this on the air my life insurance company is going to cancel me no they won't they, they eat like they, they eat frosties <laughs> too so <laughs> Here's, I was just thinking, I, I bought along one more chart, a couple, just two more charts, Charles. And it, this one shows where we actually stand with AI right now, because it, we talk about it's just the beginning. So as you know, it's all the buzz. Um, personally, I, before I even get into this chart, I have to say, uh, at my um, exercise class, speaking of Frosties, yes, at my exercise class last week, it was all the talk about among a group of teachers and college professors there. And they chatted about how chat GPT is making it very difficult to find plagiarism within their student papers right now. Uh, current plagiarism detection software, according to this group of educators, simply doesn't work well at the moment. And to say that they are very concerned about the future of educational practices for their students really is just an understatement. So that's one of a, a, a a, not a downside, but a barrier that's uh, that needs to be fixed. And maybe that's so you want to make money. Fixable. You figure out the, the the monitoring system where this is how it's going to be. You're going if you're in college or high school, or whatever. You're going to have to put a camera up, and you're going to have to basically film yourself writing the paper. With yeah. you know, you're going to have to basically you give your teacher spyware to monitor your computer. That that's how that's going to be. And oh. I, I know this. I was in my playing with Chat GPT. I just mm -hmm. wanted to see what it would just again playing with it. 
Mm-hmm. I, I asked it to, you know, write an essay on the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. And okay. boom, like that, it produced something that looked like like a, an undergraduate uh, history major would, would, would have written. It was a very good, um, concise essay that covered all the major points. Okay, let's get more complex. Write me an essay that explains how Napoleon Bonaparte led to the rise of Adolf Hitler uh, decades mm-hmm. later. Okay. Thinking like that's tougher. Let's see. Let's see what it does. Mm-hmm. And again, like that, it produced something that I would say like a like a PhD student in history. You know, someone who's that does this. You know, professionally would have yeah. come up with that goes into yes, the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte led to the concept of the nation state, led to the concept of nationalism, da, 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 and then you end up with the Third Reich. I'm like, mm. okay, like that's. That's good. Like it just did it in a second. It, original content, like right there. Yeah. And then just again, just for grins, I uh, I asked the, the sister AI uh, Dolly to just paint me a picture of Napoleon Bonaparte that looks like it was made by Pablo Picasso. That's random. I won't right. do that, will it? And it did. It it and actually I'll uh, I'll include that graphic myself. Uh-huh. It's uh, it's a a. Pablo Picasso forgery of Napoleon Bonaparte. So there you go. Wild. Oh my goodness. You really put it through its paces there, Charles. Got to, I mean, that's. I like to think I'm part of the training process. (laughs) I think you are. You're you're enough weird nerds like me doing (laughs) weird things on chat GPT. Well, actually it may just cause it to turn into Skynet and and exterminate humanity. I I mean, we'll, we'll see, but I like to think I'm improving this software by making it work harder. Okay. Well, hey, that's <laughs> that's what will make it grow and exponentially over the next months and years to come. Okay. So this uh, chart I have here is actually I'm going to share it one more time. It's the it shows how the global AI market size is forecast to grow from about 140 billion today to 1.8 trillion dollars by 2030, a 13 fold increase. And this is from Statista, and Statista data actually points out that chatbots, um, image generating AI mobile applications are all among the major trends improving AI in the coming years as various fields of study, fields of study will in some aspect adopt AI within their business structure. And just one more thing. More everybody, over, everybody, everybody. I mean, Wendy's already is for crying out loud. Wendy's, which is the most low tech. I mean, it's hamburgers for crying out loud and they're already doing it. They're already doing it. And it's that gener- generative AI um aspect which is just ai that enables users to quickly generate new content based on a variety of inputs like text images sound animation all kind of things 3d models that is projected to grow from 11.3 billion in 2030 to 51.8 billion dollars by 2028 a compound annual growth rate or kager of 35.6 percent and this is according to markets and markets so basically, AI is here to stay. That's all I have yeah, to say. Yeah, well, that, you remember back in the 90s, we had a huge jump in productivity in the second half of the decade. Uh, it, productivity went through the roof, and it was because the internet went mainstream, and all of a sudden, companies could cut costs, they could cut labor, they could do all this stuff that was amazing with the internet that you could never do before. And then productivity really sort of leveled off in the late 2000s, like 2006, 2007. That's when productivity kind of started to flatline. And it's kind of been flat ever since. Whatever gains we've gotten from technology, we've sort of squandered with, you know, wasting too much time on the smartphone, I think. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I think we're very close. It's not in the data yet. It's going to take a little time, not much, but a little time for this to start showing up in the data. Mm-hmm. When companies really start implementing this, we're going to have a late 1990s style boom in productivity, if not if not even bigger. It's probably going to be larger, but yeah, that's where we are. I agree with that. I, I was talking to Ian about that. I think we're looking at another a bump of like 1.5% in productivity, where it's been hovering around 2% for so long. This is fascinating that we are seeing this in real time happening. Mm. Indeed. So, indeed. So I, I just have one final idea to share with the Bannon Edge Nation and your viewers. If you want to invest in like in an in, in AI type ETF, well, I that was going to be my question. How can we profit from this? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Well, I was thinking <clears throat> you can consider buying shares of the $1.7 billion Global X Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF. Uh, the ticker is BOTS, B-O-T-Z. Now, this fund is up about 24% year to date, 
And it actually led the ETF inflows uh, with about $121 million so far this year. And the stock, I'm sorry, this ETF actually, um, the stock's holdings in this ETF are expected to benefit from increased adoption and utilization of robotics as well as artificial intelligence. So that's Does the ETF favorite. hold Wendy's? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy may be cutting edge. You never know. There's Wendy's is something <laughs> else. <laughs> so you never know. <laughs> well, very good. Uh, Amber, thanks for being on today. I, I appreciate it. Uh, it. It's always insightful. You gave us lots of food for thought. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Always good to hear you, hear your, how your mind is working. So it's always fascinating and, and, and full of, of inf good information. So thank you, Charles. Well, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now, to our listeners out there, to our viewers out there, if you want to hear more from Amber, you want to see more what the team is up to, please go to BanyanHill.com. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw here today, please reach out to us at BanyanEdge at BanyanHill.com. We would love to hear what you thought of all this. Yes. Otherwise... <laughs> We gave you a lot to chew on this with this this week. Uh, we'll be back here same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and make yourself some money.